What's up, everybody? It's me, it's Alexis Maurice and Trey Hollywood. And it is time for an all new episode of Hollywood Happening. So go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine. Tonight, we are drinking on some white Ziff Sutter Home. Um, put on some lipstick, pull up a chair because it is time for us to discuss not only the latest happenings in Hollywood, but just the latest happenings in news period. Right. Because there's some crazy stuff going on. So while we take our first sip, go ahead and like this video, share it on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all of those things because you know we're trying to come all the way up. Trey, how have you been doing to the east side? Yeah. To the deluxe apartment. In the sky, we're moving on, moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the pie. Well, you gotta do it at the end, probably. Fish don't burn in the oh, kitchen. Fish no. don't burn in the grill. <laughs> Took a whole lot of trying <laughs> just to get up that hill. Do, do. Now we're up in the big leaves. Try some something that hey. As long as we get it, we don't need it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We're moving, moving on, on up. <laughs> Trey, have you been? It's been a long time since we've actually seen you guys, so we got a lot to cover today. But how have you been, Trey? I've been good. I've been good. I've been good. You know, <laughs> we understand. Life, <laughs> life happens. So let's get started with not necessarily Hollywood news, but let's get started about this Rachel Dolezal shenanigans or whatever so have you heard about this trend yes i have so just to give you guys just a little bit a, a little bit of background this past week um news broke that um this uh president or head of the naacp um in a specific area i forgot where it was but she basically has been misrepresenting herself um claiming that she's african-american hmm. And there, there was this bar interview that broke where she was actually given an interview to KXLY4 where the reporter basically asked her, um, Jeff Humphrey, are you, you know, black? Are you African-American? And um, <laughs> she um, got... She fumbled she over her words. Fabulous. She got flustered. Yeah. Um. I. I I'm I really. I don't um, know. And I don't know what this was all about. And I told you that my. my I don't know because he posted. Black. He pulled out a picture and he asked her, "Is this your father?" Mm -hmm. And she stated, "Yes." Um. And he was like, "So your father is black? And are you black? Are you African? I. I. I'm not really sure what what you're trying to imply. I. I. I don't know." And so he asked her again, as simple as possible, and she just walked out. <laughs> she just walked off the, in the middle of the interview, um, which later sparked, of course, her parents, um, who have come out and said that they are white. They are of Caucasian, Caucasian descent, descent. Mm -hmm. and stated that their daughter basically is a fraud. That she's you. misrepresenting herself. Now, this goes all the way back to when she first enrolled in college at Howard University. She enrolled in an arts program, specifically the African-American portfolio. And since then, she's identified herself with black people. Or, you know, she's uh, misrepresented herself as black. Her family, her mother and father, have even adopted black children mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and parents later came out, and a lot of people are criticizing the parents because they felt that they should not have come out and kicked their daughter down. Now, quiet as it's kept, they are an estranged family. So this young um, lady, um, Rachel, doesn't even really talk to her parents. And there's some mess going on in the family where she's officially taking custody of one of the little black children who they adopted. I, white people adopting black kids are like, they're, they're like accessories or something like that. It's just crazy. But they have adopted, she has basically taken custody allegedly alleged um of some type of family abuse or something like that so she raised the little boy or she raises the little boy as her son rather than her, her brother. brother and this whole thing has just gotten completely out of control um a lot of african americans are outraged um the naacp they are standing by her you know saying that you know the NAACP's mission isn't something that's just restricted or um, reserved just for black people, African American. White people, you know, can add to the case too. But what I mean, what do you think about this whole thing, Trey? I mean, I don't really understand why the black community is so 
African American is so outraged. It's not like she was disrespectful. Mm-hmm. She didn't, you know, dog the African American. But she misrepresented. This herself. is true. So then she got point, a full ride at Howard University that could have been given to a really person to someone who's really of African American or Black descent. So what you're saying is, is that only African American descent is deserving of the full ride. No, that's not what I said. What, what I'm saying the is, scholarship oh, wait, was. You, you asked me. Let me say. We we'll get to so, the point. I, to, to me, I feel that a person is offered a full ride based on the things that they have done. But if the, right scholarship, if the scholarship is reserved is, specifically for African American students, that's right. She's not an African. That's not that's racial. racial. But what I'm saying is, is she went to a predominantly people, black people, college. There are scholarships out there for people who are white who want to ach- attend African American colleges. But people, I'm sorry, I'm just over talking. When here. people are offered a scholarship, they're offered a scholarship because what? For various reasons, Trey. There oh. could be people of low income. There could be honor students. So it could be for m- making this. Low income. But what I'm saying is, there's no reason to be upset unless you're sitting here and you're telling me, okay, well, she got the scholarship only because she was black. Well, if that was one of the stipulations for the scholarship, that it was to a deserving African American student. Not the deserving. But when I say deserving, meaning they met the qualifications. For so the was this on? I said it, that people need to realize or do research and understand that if this scholarship was for because she's black or is deserving of a black individual because they're black, then okay. But if she got this scholarship based on things that she did, she might did community service. She might have um, did this in, in college. I mean, in high school, she might did this and that. It might have not just been because she's African American. I hate. Well, I would hate to think that she was only given this this scholarship because she's African American. I would hope so to think that she got it because of things that she's accomplished, things that she did, and it might be in the African American community. She might have did charity. She might have did this and that for the African American. Well, it could community. have made a difference. The school gave her the scholarship up under the pretense that she was black, and she's not black. And she needs to stop identifying herself as African American. Well, and there, and since then, maybe she was. What were you about to maybe say? Maybe she's mentally unstable. There ain't nothing, nothing wrong mentally it's unstable with that woman. That woman know what she doing. And I mean, and this is my thing. I don't. There's a lot of white people who are in the you know the black movement. You know who have fought for causes. They've been out by their own race. You know through segregation and things of that particular nature for wanting to help African Americans. You know, to to stop the slavery and the and stop you know segregation. So there's nothing wrong with her just being herself and wanting to do all of that. My, I want to understand why she felt the need to represent herself as being black. That's all my thing is. Why has she done it? And now there's claims out there that she misrepresented um, or she lied in some um, in some cases about hate crimes. Things of that nature. So her character is now being called into question. Why does she feel that she has to lie about her race? I don't care about her being a president or one of the presidents of a local branch of the NAACP. I don't care about that. But she's lied all of these years. I mean, have you seen pictures of her? Yes. She looks very your color. You know, she looks like you. And she had she goes out of her way to get these hairstyles, these natural styles and things of that particular Great. nature. She's putting forth a lot of effort. I was even reading one article where her brothers are, you know, she's estranged from her regular brothers as well because she has, um, they came to visit, one of them came to visit her once and she told them to not speak of their white parents. And, and her parents were shady. I will admit, I think they were shady for coming out, but they had to let the world know. For what? Because, that because she is misrepresenting herself. You can't do that. That's not fair for you to misrepresent yourself. Those parents like wonder black kids they have to get scholarships. Trey, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What? The parents just want the black kids they have yeah. to be to be public now. They want they want they want to be they want their own reality show. Well, social media went up. They want for them this. to be able to have, be able to get a scholarship. Now, 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 NAACP knows that this white these white parents have black kids, and maybe they will get them a scholarship. Oh, boy, I bet you one please. of I bet you one of them about to graduate from high crazy. school. No, we're, gonna look, we're gonna look at the information. I bet you one of them about to graduate from high school. Well, social media went up in arms about this whole ask Rachel stuff. People posing all kind of questions. Yes, I was always for wondering example, what that was. Who taught you to spell independent? Teacher, your parents, or Webby and Boosie. <laughs> Which floor did Bro Man live on? 
A the third, B the fifth, C the fourth, or D the seventh? Ask Rachel. What floor did he live on? From the fifth floor. I think it's the fifth floor, bromance. And so all of these crazy, yeah, all of these crazy memes and social media has gone up in a roar. I don't know. I just think this whole thing. And so now people are identifying Rachel as transgender. I mean, not transgender, transracial. What the hell is that? Either you black or you're white or you're Asian or you're Hispanic. Nobody got time for all of this transracial stuff. Ain't got time for that. And then I also saw another meme where they had um, it was this one particular white person. He was going off because he was like, black people try to be European or white all the time. I saw when it was a brandy one. Or whatever. They had Beyonce, Nicki Minaj. Oh yeah. Um, that. They had a couple other people with these blonde hairs and these blue eyes and gray eyes and all this stuff like that. But now African Americans get mad when someone white wants to portray themselves to be black. My thing is, just be you. That's all it is. You can appreciate the African American culture. You can appreciate the Asian culture. You can appreciate the Hispanic culture. Oh, I forgot about that. We can talk about it, all of that stuff. You can you can appreciate it, but just be you and identify yourself. That's right. If you're gonna be white, be white. If you're gonna be black, be black. If you're gonna be Hispanic, be Hispanic. Asian, Asian, Jamaican, Asian. Any, any dog of the set, you're going to be big. Right. Because I'm going to be me. Now. And he's going to be him. At the end of the day, that's all we can be. That's all I That's can who be. God made us to be. And that's why I was trying to, of which. That's why I was trying to say this next subject. God made him what he was. That's where he should have stayed. Who? Bruce Jenner. Kate. Kate Bruce Jenner. Right. Okay. So, I know this is probably going to upset a lot of people in the LGBT community. Specifically yes. those individuals who are transgender. Oh. Caitlyn Jenner. So we recorded and then on a couple of Mondays ago, I think two weeks ago, when I was on my way to the airport and I was here heading over to Arizona, news broke and the pictures posted or the pictures broke Can I just say something of real quick? Caitlyn Jenner on the cover of Vanity Fair magazine. Can I just say something real quick? Yes. So I'm scrolling on my Instagram, you know, that underscore guy underscore Trey mm -hmm. with an I and a Y. I'm scrolling down Instagram and I see this picture of this woman. Caitlyn Jenner. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who it was. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, well, this is what I said. And please, I'm not racist. I'm mixed. So don't, don't think I'm racist against my own. But I said, you know, black, white people don't age like black people do. So I said, whoever well, this black woman, don't crack. Right, right. And I said, whoever this white woman is, they did good at the makeup, making her look, you know, trying to make her look younger than who she was. <laughs> and then the next scroll I saw, I saw it again. And I said, wait a minute. Somebody said Bruce Jenner. I said, this is Bruce. My co-worker. When we when I you know, made it to the terminal in the airport, I showed my co-workers as well. As I'm walking through the airport, I'm putting up the post on the Hollywood <laughs> happening you know, site. I'm like, oh my God, look at Bruce. Look at Bruce. So I showed my co-workers, they're like, who is that? That was like, is that Janice Dickinson? She looks good. I said, no, yeah. it is like Caitlyn Jenner. Bruce Jenner, the athlete for Olympic athlete, formerly known as Bruce Jenner, likes to be called Kate. It's all an If it's my ignorance when it comes to understanding the whole transgender mindset, I don't know if it's my religious background, you know, that conflicts with what happened, well, what's happening, but, you know, I don't get it. I just don't get it. To me, Bruce just wants to be a cross-dresser. To me, Bruce is confused. Bruce don't know if he gonna be with women. Well, he says he don't want to be with a man. He said he ain't gay. He's not gay. He yeah. just likes to dress like a woman. So if you like to do that, just dress when you want to dress and then get home. But he says that he feels like he's been in a woman's body all of his life. And I, I, I just don't understand. And people are just courageous. He's courageous. You know, he's bold. He's, bold. he's you know, stepping out. He ain't do nothing no different than any other transgender person has done in this world. 
Look at Laverne Cox. Look at all of those other transgender people who've been murdered. You know, who've been attacked and stuff like that. But the thing about Bruce is, and I guess what I, I, this is what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, people, transgenders in the LGBT community, they identify with the LGBT community. Bruce doesn't identify with he the LGBT he's not, community. The thing about his, and it, it kind of makes me mad when I see people who are members of the community because applaud he's not him gay. and give him kudos and stuff. I don't know what's going on with this man. Like everybody and then everybody uh, Like RuPaul for example. Mm-hmm. He recognized he's LGBT. Right. LGBT. Mm-hmm. He's gay. He dresses like a woman. But he's gay. Do you think Bruce is going to stay this way? Well, Bruce says he's not. Bruce said he's straight, but he's a woman. Right. He's confused. He's I don't confused, know. ignorant soul. No, don't call him ignorant, Ray. I don't think he's ignorant. I think he's ignorant. I just don't really. It took too long. I don't understand. He got 16 kids. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I guess I don't understand. I, I've been reading. I've been trying show. to find life talking with, with people. He already Caitlin. got a damn reality he show. He got a life with, series he coming out. Life with Caitlin. Caitlin. Oh, see. Or whatever. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm just trying to identify with it. I, I think it's tough growing up your whole life thinking that you are a woman when you're trapped in a man's body. And well, in my personal opinion, you know I mean? you're, you're all and a people, sexual woman. And people think, I guess transgenders think that they are really changed once they um, transition I'm not, I'm not into. In, I don't know. This is just. I think we really need to have a. We should have a conversation. Maybe we can get maybe some transgender people to come and have a round table one day and we record it. Because it, it's not. And it's sure. Not, I, I don't few. really want. I don't know if I really want to understand it. A part of me just like. A part of, I will admit, a part of me, y'all crazy. Y'all just doing the most. Oh, well, because at the end of the day, when Judgment Day comes, God is going to look at you how he made you. And he made you a man with testicles. Yeah. He didn't make you a woman with fallopian tubes and things of that particular nature. I mean, you know, I, I grew up breast, titties, whatever. <laughs> I grew up, you know... I used to play around, you know, put t-shirts on my head, pretending like I'm a woman, and, you know, I, I guess that was just, you know. You could have shared that story later. Whatever. Really but, I mean, but it was just like me kidding around. I didn't walk around thinking that I was a woman. You put on your mama heels? Or whatever. I used to put on my grandma heels. I remember one day my dad came over and he told my grandma, Miss Coon, you know, I, I'm respecting you, but I'm just going to ask that you don't let Maurice wear you know your heels anymore and she stopped you know at the end and so i i don't know i just don't get it mm-hmm. i don't get it and i just think about judgment day like I, and don't get me wrong i don't think that they're not going to get into heaven or anything of that particular nature but it, it's just very strange to me mm-hmm. and i guess i don't understand it or whatever i don't know if i really want to understand it and it's no disrespect to the community when i saw it i turned around like a tornado like, like, a, <laughs> like a twisted tornado <laughs> and to, speaking of bruce um his daughter kali kind of clapped back at akon i'm not at akon at snoop dogg and chris brown now catch these teas what happened was um, Snoop Dogg actually put up a picture on Instagram and it said this shout out to Akon he's about to supply 600 million Africans with solar power I'm really upset that this isn't major news but that science project Bruce Jenner is pound society so Snoop put this up and Chris Brown later reposted it on his Instagram that's as right. well that's right now you know Chris Brown and Kylie are kind of friends. Fuck that. Or whatever, because him and Tigger um, are friends. Is it Tigger or Tiger? Tiger. Tiger is our friends. Or whatever, so... <laughs> what are you laughing at me? Tiger, never get that man name right. I'm never going to get Tigger it right. Tiger is B-E-T. Tiger. Okay. Ty. T-Y. Okay, I'm Go. still not going to get Tiger. it. Tiger. But anywho, so Kylie tweeted or put this on the picture. State what you want about the world without bashing others. Leave a positive impact. So everyone was like, oh my God, you know, Chris Brown is dogging Bruce Jenner and things of this particular nature. He then later did take it down, as he always does. And I've been seen out since then, you know, hugging and, and things of that particular nature. I think sometimes we, the world is so sensitive now where people can't vocalize how they really feel. That doesn't mean that Chris Brown isn't your friend, Kylie, or whatever, but 
just something that he identifies with with the African American or African American race that is not getting you know any type of you know recognition. And shout out to Akon for doing that. Six hundred million Africans are getting lights and electricity just build this solar power that he is actually you know uh, providing to them. I actually saw Akon a couple of weeks ago in Wells Fargo, to be honest with you. But um, hmm? you saw that? Yeah, I saw that before. That ain't the first time that came out. But, um, you know, she clapped back after that whole thing. Chris Brown is just always caught up in some type of news or anything of that nature. Um, so let's move on to the next subject. Let's talk about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> now, on the finale of the midwinter or midsummer, midspring finale, whatever they call it, of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, in a preview for the second half of the season, Kim Kardashian revealed that she was pregnant. And since then, you know, everyone has been saying that she's actually pregnant. Congratulations to Kim and Kanye if it in fact is true that they're pregnant. But Trey was just kind of showing a picture of me, of Kim, showing a picture of Kim to me today. And he was like, is she really pregnant? I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't look. Obviously, this show was shot a couple of months ago. So she should be showing. So by now, maybe she should be showing. Now, one thing I can say about keeping up the Kardashians with most reality shows, it takes months and months and months. It don't take them that many because they're kind of shooting it as it kind of goes along in a sense. It may be like a two or three month lag maybe in she between them. But maybe she should be showing. Now, we were looking at a picture earlier today. And send me that picture that you showed me too. And I could possibly see a little pudge there. But a part of me feels that maybe she isn't pregnant. There's a lot of rumors circulating out there that she has a surrogate. Or whatever. Um, so we'll, I guess, we'll actually see what happens when the show returns um, from their little small hiatus. If she's actually pregnant, what do you think about it, Trey? I don't maybe. think she's pregnant. I think it was a publicity stunt. Uh, maybe she lost the baby and it's going to come out later on in the season. I don't know. If she is pregnant, though, I'm happy for her because this is something that she really, really wanted. Um, speaking of which, she threw Kanye a nice little um, she, 38 she just, year she old. It. She she tossed it. She, she threw him like a big birthday bash back in Los Angeles. She rented out the Staples Center or whatever and had all kind of people there. His ex boyfriend, John Legend, um, was there singing happy birthday to him and John Legend's Hello. wife. Kylie and Chloe. And, Hello. Um, there was um, <laughs> what? Did y'all? Did y'all? Am I tripping? Did y'all see that? <laughs> Justin Bieber pushing pushing T two chains. They were all playing basketball, and I think um, Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Scotty Pippen, all of them. Of I think they, they had to be doing the videos or something. They had, like that they had to because I was in their damn stadium. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna have some players say something. <laughs> Shit. So congratulations. Well, not congratulations, but happy belated birthday, I guess, to Kanye West. Now that's how you throw a damn birthday party. Yeah, I, I guess. You yeah. rent out the whole damn stadium, and you have like a little private yeah, basketball little song, game song, for yo. your lover and things of that particular nature. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about Raven Trey. What happened with Raven? Raven, Raven Simone. Mm -hmm. My God. Well, okay, so we talked about Raven Simone a couple a couple episodes ago, I think. Mm -hmm. and then we, yeah, we talked. A couple about last two or three episodes actually. Raven Simone has been guest starring on the big show, The View. She had actually thirty seven guest appearances. appearances. Um, and it's been announced that Raven Simone is now officially. Go ahead, you want to say it? The host. She is now officially. She is permanent, mm -hmm. folks. On the view, I, I mean, I'm happy for it because you know what? Congratulations, I felt like she's gonna speak for the young community, for the LGBT, um, for the light skins, younger generation, um, for, the, for the light skins. You know, y'all don't have a voice. We do have a voice. No, you don't. We have a voice in this. Anybody, like, all you have is crying and whining. That's all. That's all. Be else we doing on the tracks, crying and whining. Right. But congratulations, ah! Raven. Um, again. I know at the beginning, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know how I feel about this or oh, whatever. But she's been growing on me more and more and more. I think this um, might, I think she might be the youngest. She is. Host she has been the youngest. 29 host. years old. Exactly. So She's younger than me. Yeah, but younger than you, but so close in age. Watching the TV show, you never Thought, knew that yeah. they were that close. Unlike Say About a Bell. They was playing these teenagers, but them was some old behind people, you know, playing. Like Coolest, Stacey Day. She was playing a high school. Right, girl. exactly. And her ass was in her 30s. Oh, this is Leandris. I'll call you back, Leo. Leo, he'll call you back. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to Raymond Simone. I'm looking forward to this. I still feel that they need to hire one more person. So wait, no, that's going to be like, that's five people. That's four. It's only four. Oh, Nicole Wallace, Whoopi, 
um, um, Rosie Perez and now uh, Raven Simone. I still think they need to hire yeah, a they do need person. Yeah, they can hire yeah. me person. I mean, I, I'll do drag. I mean, Caitlyn, I mean, Bruce did it. I mean, no, Trey. You know, I go up in there and say, no, hey, Trey. girls. Absolutely not. I would do a short do so I had to keep putting those things on my back. Now, I, I was gone mean. when this announcement came up, but Trey, tell me about this whole Beyonce foolishness. Big announcement on Good Morning America with Beyonce knows <laughs> Carter. <laughs> Oh my god, I swore we was about to get another tour. I thought we was about to get an album. Everybody I thought, thought she was it was pregnant. pregnant. She was about to tell us that she was finally having her first child. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was ready. I was ready. I think everyone. Now, my, I didn't DVD. even know. I set my DVR. People missed class. Oh, it was late to class, late to work. Everybody waking up early. And then on top of it, she wasn't even there, right? Mm. So tell me, what was this announcement? She sent over a video. As like, usual, yeah. in true Beyonce form. Why break the form if that's what you do? She basically informed. Some people can't say she just does, does that to the BET Awards. Mm. She does it to a lot of people. But she does it to white folks, too. So it's equal opportunity across the board. Yeah, <laughs> so she basically informed us that all y'all motherfuckers, all y'all are fat. <laughs> All y'all are obese. Because me, Beyonce knows, uh -huh. I'm a vegan. Mm -hmm. So all y'all who ain't vegans, mm -hmm. all y'all don't eat grass mm -hmm. and berries and nuts and insects. So she accomplished being being almost white. So she got that down pat. Okay, right. um, now she's going to accomplish on being a thin Caucasian woman. Mm -hmm. She said, why Rachel? Rachel would pretend to be black. Why can't I just pretend to be white? So basically... Beyonce has came out and now she's stating that she's going to be a vegetarian. She's vegan. And, um, she's going to be vegan, basically. She wants us to follow her journey. Fuck that. Right. I'm eating me some fried chicken every once in a while. <laughs> no, nah, this was fish, actually kind of... curry chicken. <laughs> God damn it, I can't go vegan. I'm sorry. And every now and then, and I'll I crave a vegan. burger. You know what I'm saying? You know, some red meat. Shit. I want some red meat every I don't even eat pork like that, but I want a piece of bacon on my, on my, on my burger do. once exactly. in a while. A pork or shop some might come or some hog mogs, no, or some no. neck bones. You don't eat all that. I don't eat all that. No, I don't eat all that. Mm. You ain't black. No. You just like Rachel. Just like Rachel. You are fraud. I'm you misrepresent yourself. So ask me, am I, am I, am I, am I African American? So are Trey? Are you an African American? Are you black? Well, I don't. I don't understand the the question. Like, are, are you black? Well, I showed you a picture of my. That was my dad. I told you that was my dad. Right, but that's not what your real biological father is saying. His I, name is I on your birth certificate. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. But, but I told you. <laughs> and that's how the interview went. <laughs> Crazy. But Beyonce, congratulations Child. that you're a vegan. She just like the whole um, word of yeah, that. You, you, Girl, you're going to post a picture on Instagram and everybody will know. Fake everybody. She had to call Good Morning America tell us she yeah. had an announcement. You ain't even have the courtesy to come and actually give the, the, the announcement in yourself. Who cares? She, I don't give a damn if you eat grass, berries, and nuts. Your your little diet worked for you. That was a stunt. And that that's was, good. That's but you stunt. you were wrong for that. She could have posted it on Instagram her, and you would have found out. Her, right. She should have saved that for Instagram and Snapchat. That could have been her first Snapchat. Right. If she's not on Snapchat, that could have been her very first Snapchat. But you choose to wake everybody up. Make the world late, world stop once again for you, and you telling us that you eat berries and stuff. That is just not cool. But I'm happy for you. Great healthy lifestyle choice for you. Chai. I like meat. Good luck. I like all of that stuff. So congratulations to Beyonce. Now Iggy. Who? We was supposed to talk about that. No, we weren't. No, you just speak? I'm already saying something. Okay, well, statement. Brandy made an announcement. <laughs> So Trey, tell us what Brandy's announcement was. You know what told me. Go ahead, it. go ahead, Trey. It's up. There you go. Look right, right. You see? Look right there and tell the world what is Brandy's announcement. A uh, Brandy got an announcement. It was. It was an announcement. She well, what was it? What was the announcement? That Beyonce was vegan. That was a Brandy's announcement. <laughs> so what was Brandy's announcement? Tell them. They're listening. They're waiting. A couple of weeks ago, we made an announcement. We, we let you all know that Brady is in Chicago, in New York, starring as Roxy Hart in the musical Chicago. Alexis Maurice here mentioned that we were going to bring that as a topic that the show was extended. Remember? No. I'll show you the text message. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anywho, if you all are in New York, or if you missed the other shows, or if you want to catch the shows, the show has been extended to August 2nd. Mm -hmm. If you want to come this weekend, I'm coming. 
But really, if you want to come the weekend, I'm coming. I'll be going the weekend of July. Well, the, the last show. That ain't finalized July. yet, Trey. What Wait till it's finalized so you can tell people what you're going. I am going. You buy that ticket, then you tell everybody that you're going. Right, well, I'm buying my ticket this week. <laughs> but anywho, um, one thing I do like about Brandy is her interaction with her friends. One of my um, friends from college, Agacia. We're not friends, but we knew each other from college. Um, she was actually, she went to New York City to go see her and she waited outside. She was first in line for when she came out and um, she got to meet and talk and interact with Brandy. She sung for Brandy and Brandy cried. I thought that was so nice. And it was another video I saw, it was a guy. The one I, mean, I you, Yeah, you posted that video or whatever, but. Um, she, that's what she does. She makes her fans feel like we're the celebrities. That's, that's why nice. she calls us stars. Right. All right, is that it? Yeah, we, we got that out now. Mm -hmm. So can we move on? Sure. All right. So Why let's not? go ahead and talk about Iggy. Um, congratulations to Iggy on her engagement. Mm -hmm. Who did she get engaged to? Her boyfriend. Who was her boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, child. So she, but clearly she's she gonna call that off too eventually. Oh, wow. Don't say <laughs> that. She's gonna call that off. Iggy, get it together, girl. Mm -hmm. But anyway, first off, congratulations to your on your engagement. Say you call um, it happy for you on that particular perspective. Oh the second thing is now, Iggy, Ti, whoever over there is in charge of that artist for you, I'm gonna need for them to get it together. Now she canceled her tour, then it went back home again. Then she canceled it again, and we talked about that last time. Mm -hmm. Then she got engaged, so good news. So she delivered more bad news again. And this time, the bad news was she was scheduled to perform at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Pride event. But in true Iggy form and in true Iggy fashion, she canceled on them niggas. She straight canceled on the Pittsburgh Pride people. Now... A lot of people are happy in this case that she canceled because they were not happy about um, her performing anyway. Members of the LGBT community felt that she shouldn't have been headlining the show because of some of her past um, statements and things of that nature. So this is what she had to say. I am truly disappointed that I have to share this news, but I will no longer be performing at Pittsburgh Pride on June 13th. This has been a difficult decision as I truly support the event in LGBT IQA communities. What is IQA? That's new. However, I feel my participation at this point will only serve to further distract from the truth, the true purpose of the event. I am a firm believer in equality. Unfortunately, in the past, as a young person, Who's IQA? You said IQA. LGBT IQA. Um, I'm a firm believer in equality. Unfortunately, in the past, as a young person, I used words I should not have. The last thing I want is for someone, uh, for something so carelessly said to be interpreted as reflective of my character. I meant no harm and deeply regret ever uttering those words. As an adult, I would never use them because I understand they play a detrimental role in the fight for issues that I do truly believe in. Yeah. I am sorry to anyone I have offended and disappointed, and I wish all my fans and friends participating in Pride the best of luck. Irish Queer. Oh. The Irish Queer Archive. I don't even know what that has to do with it. But anyway. I guess maybe they were... So, um, but anyway, many people who were on the board or had something to do with the LGBT community and the pride there in Pittsburgh did not want her to participate in it because of some of the things that she said in the past. Um, you know, there's been rumors that she was homophobic, um, you know, that she wasn't for, you know, equal rights for people who are of homosexual when it comes to marriage and things of that particular nature. Um, so they were ecstatic that she actually, you know, dropped out. Only thing I say, Iggy, don't do anything else. Don't perform no more. Just enjoy your new um, engagement bliss with your fiance, and let's just wait for your new album to come out. If your song's hot, then people will pay for your ticket to go see you perform. Until then, don't do anything else. Please don't do anything else because you continue to embarrass yourself, in my personal opinion, over and over and over Well, Sierra has taken our advice to stop, you know, pause with the singing and, and <laughs> go ahead and, and model. Sierra's taking everybody's advice. So, 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 Iggy, maybe you should take our advice. Yeah, she can't model because I don't want to see her on no cover no magazine. Not that new face she got, girl. Iggy, maybe you should take our advice. You know, just do your music. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, open up for someone. Shit, T.I. just came out of the album, didn't he? Open yeah. up for him. Mm -hmm. Open up That's for Britney. Open up for J-Lo. Janet's coming back. Maybe you can open up for her. Um, 
and, and, and stop trying to do these tours, headlining these tours and, and making these obligations, making these commitments to doing these things and just do you and, and enjoy this engagement and plan your wedding. Right, and wait till the new album come out. And let's see, let's see. I got time to see your name right. canceling some other shit again. Because <laughs> if you cancel this damn wedding, this engagement, I girl, your, your word is not bond. Your word is not bond, and people are not going to be liking you, and people are not going to be checking for you anymore. I want to give just a light on another music artist real quick, um, since we're talking about mm -hmm. artists. Um, Tamia. Oh, okay. Tamia has a new album out called Love Life. Mm -hmm. If you know Tamia, she's saying. Stranger, no, that's not. There's a stranger, yeah, that's a stranger in, the house. in my house. You know, she also sung me. Mm -hmm. um, she has a beautiful voice, live and she's recorded, a and she's a beautiful woman. And you know, one thing I love about her is that she had a song that actually talked about her, her husband, and how they make it work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, she had an interview on the Breakfast Club a couple of months, maybe last month or sometime. Like that's pretty interesting. So if you don't she's know, she's not. She's nothing. There's nothing. You know extraordinary about her she's just a regular person yeah so i love her. her voice is amazing mm -hmm. and her new not her new album love life is out and it's great i love it really yes. i haven't heard it i purchased it of course rashad Rasan. he said he purchased it mm -hmm. he said he liked it um so it's a real good album so y'all picked that up speaking of albums and speaking of music so last episode we talked about janet jackson mm -hmm. um teasing her new music that's hopefully going to be coming out this fall and not only is she releasing a new album but she's releasing the new album on her record oh, label, label rhythm nation so yeah. congratulations i love it when my people win another you know um black young you know and it's gonna be supported not like that um that other thing that um, the, um that title thing title's gonna come up i'm confident that it's gonna be coming you, you, up you downloaded it you got it yet? i haven't subscribed so to four it episodes yet. you guys and he has studied he's gonna do it he hasn't done it <laughs> my exact my, my i just I haven't gotten around to do, i downloaded the application and i i think i did the free trial too i just uh -huh. have to okay whatever trey anyway but congratulations to Janet Jackson on, you know, starting up her own label. Um, I think it's going to be similar to Jay-Z's setup when it comes to title. The artists will have complete control over their music Can and I sign? publishing I and things sign. of that particular nature. I'm, really, so I really started I'm excited. And I think Janet Jackson's up for an award on the BET Awards that's coming up in two weeks or so, too. Oh. She's getting one of those, like, Lifetime Awards or something like that. One of Lifetime those Achievement Award. Yeah, something like that, but whatever BET calls it. Or whatever. So congratulations to Janet Jackson and Tamia on their new records and their new record label. Yeah. Um, let's okay, so there was a viral video <laughs> that went crazy. I mean it went bananas. Berserk. Uh what is the young man's name? Courtney. Courtney. Mm -hmm. Now you guys saw it. Mm -hmm. Courtney um, was a, a alleged, he was an eyewitness to, was it a half speech? Hey, what was it? Well, his name is Courtney Barnes. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> he basically <laughs> witnessed a, a, a roundabout of a police officer. And it was a twisting. And it was a twisting. A, a twist, twist about. A twist about. And yes, like a turn girl. Honey. All that. Oh my God. So basically, <laughs> he went viral. I mean, his videos went viral after an interview that he was having with the show. Using reporter. words all out of context. He went to go get a piece of a burger. A piece of a burger. And then on top of that, after everything is said and done, you saw him made the video going into Burger King. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? I saw that. He ran up that. Let me get a piece of a burger. It just looks stupid. So, you know, he, he went viral. His, his, I honestly, I honestly went to his Instagram. I didn't know if I told you that. I went to his Instagram and he had 5,000 followers. Two hours like maybe not even two hours later, he had forty eight thousand followers off of using words incorrectly. Right. And and, and, and give him nails. over dramatic. He was the pro promo for the new Jurassic Park movie. That's what he was since he looked like one of the dinosaurs. Congratulations to him. Congratulations. I he done got he locked up now. Up. He whatever <laughs> you know. He the video made a viral. He and they found him. In. They found him. There was a warrant out for his arrest. Evidently, he turned himself uh, in. He did the right thing. And when he gets out, he just gonna be like Miss Foxy. Or whatever, because he's probably going to be having all these appearances. But mind you, the young man actually is a dancer. And he was um, auditioned a couple of times, if American, I'm not mistaken. Um, um, what is it, dance? So you think he can so dance? So you think he can dance, yes. Exactly. Um, so he's done that a couple of times. So he, he has a very outlandish personality. And he does, you know, the 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 theatrics and things of that particular yeah, nature. So, uh, But uh, I saw I some no other theatrics. clips of him. And he's flamboyant, but he kind of seems a little bit more... He's he's not as he's 
flamboyant, but he's not flamboyant like I thought he was looking at that video. Um, he was a little bit more calm in some of those things. But the interesting thing about it is, I don't know who this person was, but they put his picture ha. next to... Got him. <laughs> uh, Got him. Tony Pierre, which is a celebrity stylist. Um, I call him my nephew. He I calls call him, him his brother. brother. But it's funny, Big Team Vander Woodson. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. But it's it's they put a picture of the two of them next to each other. Now, this it was funny as hell. I'm not gonna tell you a lie because when you look at them, I'm like, oh my god, they kind of do resemble each other. In my personal opinion, I think they do kind of resemble each other. Negative. But everybody can see that that is not Tony or whatever the case may be. And whoever is, I hate to say this, but the hater or whoever the person is that decided to do this, you're real foul. But that's all right, because Tony's gonna make the best of it. You know, or whatever. The funny He's about gonna it maximize is, on this opportunity. What's that? What's that blog? The um, Sh uh, shade room. Was it the shade room that yeah. posted? The shade room posted. When I tell you, I went on there and went off. But why you went off on them people? Because it was people. They on put them. up a lot of inaccurate stuff. Sometimes. They do, and that's my point. I went off on them, but then there was people who were commenting, and so I. I I was going to hell in. Yeah, you sure did. I went to hell in. And then they took it and down. And they took it down. Yeah, they I don't think they took it down because of you. They took it down because of me. <laughs> okay. They took it down because of me. All right. They did. Because I'll tell you, I was going in. I was going to fuck all yeah, for my yeah, brother. Trey is kudos. Or whatever. My brother thanked me. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting how people can put two things together and then people saying that that was Tony. Go to Go his Facebook Tony. and his Instagram at Tony Pierre. He'll, you know, he's made an official statement letting everybody know that that's not him. Let's spell Tony Pierre for them. They ain't gonna spell Tony Pierre, all right? It's T O N E E P I E R E. Right. Well, I'll put it on the screen. Okay. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, let's talk about this whole Joyce Mitchell thing. I don't know who the hell that is. So, Joyce Mitchell was an officer, I believe, at a correctional institute where the two murderers who were locked up in New York City, she helped them escape. From the prison, they must get her some good dude. Well, it, it, it's a, that was it's a good an interesting reason. thing. She there were she made plans. She helped these inmates do whatever they needed to do to escape from the. Why would she do that? From the place, uh, apparently she was in love, or she oh, was romantically in with both of them. She had made plans to run off with the both of them. Is she black or white? White. Oh. Last minute, you know, she sisters got. Sisters don't do nothing like that. She got. You about to put my job online? I got three kids at home to take care of. You no, know, you can't say that completely because I know some black people, women, mm -hmm. um, you know, correctional sisters. officers who sleep with inmates and I got That's pregnant her. by inmates. Yeah, she looked dumb as hell. We gonna put this <laughs> picture so y'all can see her. Like Make sure you put this picture so they can see this dumb lady. Don't call her like that. Joyce Unfortunately, Mitchell. she was called up. Mitchell with two L's, y'all. Sometimes. People, you know, when they're getting the attention that they're not used to the getting. The image they let out, was it black or white? They were white. Mm -hmm. She's stupid as hell. Trey, that's real ignorant of you to um, to pinpoint what, a certain race? type of crime. Yeah, they do the same thing. Or, or Caucasian people do the same thing as black African Americans do. Right. When there's a situation so that happens, say there's a question, white, is, she black, is she white? It's a simple question. But you're it's a question that this crime is a white crime. <clears throat> And black people have helped other people escape from prison before, so don't say that. Yeah, probably somebody they related to, but not somebody they in love with. I just fell in love with two inmates. Well, she didn't got she got cold feet hey. or whatever. But the interesting thing about it is that people in her neighborhood and her neighbors and stuff like they said they're completely shocked by her behavior in this store because they said that she's not even that type of person. And they're coming to her defense. So it might be something where she was caught up, she was digmatized. Caught I don't up, know what it got was. The it, but uh, it, it's an interesting story and I I kind of do pity her or feel sorry for her just a, a little bit because you know at, at some somewhere she lost grip of reality and she thought that she could possibly have some type of future with these two men. And run off, and she has kids and everything, and you know she has a history of, you know she's been married before. I think you know her neighbors were saying that her husband, her ex-husband, don't pay child support, but she's been a, she's always been a wonderful mother, and you know a stellar co-worker and things in that particular. So I'm interested to see how this is going to continue to how this will continue to develop. The actual inmates are still on the loose, and they are murderers actually. They are murderers. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this goes, but. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Hollywood Happenings. We greatly appreciate it, and we will see y'all next time. Ta-ta. Adios.